Hi everybody, my name's Jay, and uh, um, I guess Phil. I'm Phil, I think. And uh, we've got Barry Kramer of the Game Grumps organization, Steam mm -hmm. Train, Table Flip. Yep, uh, the, the, the Game Grumps Cor Corporation. Oh yeah. Game Grumps Inc. Well, yeah. what, what would that be? Would it just be Game Grumps in general, or is it Incorporated, LLC, uh, TM? I should probably know this. I think it's an L L P I don't LLC L I don't know. It's very it's, important. It's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a business, but like none of us treat it as such, so I don't know. I've got your uh, business card. It doesn't even say on that. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, very professional over here. Not even trademarked. No, no. Hey, Phil, we should call our uh, channel Game Grumps. Oh, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just competing business already. When did they become not funny? <laughs> Uh, they started going downhill when they just kept playing Grand Theft Auto all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the I guess the core thing here is I, I just I really don't want to focus on Game Grumps, uh, oh, but thank I do. God. Just... <laughs> <laughs> what a shit show! <laughs> or or Steam Train or uh, what you do, but I'm still gonna ask. Um, so, what led you down this path into uh, into doing what you do? Um. Okay. So. Basically, I I grew up in L.A., uh, originally from L.A., and went to school in New York. And after I graduated from school, I ran out of money and didn't have a job, really. Uh, so I moved back in with my parents uh, after a few months. And this was summer 2012. This was when Game Grumps started. And throughout the summer, I'd been in contact with my buddy John, perhaps known as John Tron. Uh, and they had started this channel, uh, John, Tron, and Ego Raptor. And I'd known John since uh, middle school, actually. We go way back. And so he said, oh, you're unemployed living with your parents. Live with me and keep looking for work. So I moved in with him. And a few weeks into that, he said, why don't I teach you some simple editing stuff and you can help me out with this growing channel. So it all kind of came from that, really. It was just right place, right time, right friend. Interesting. So you just got kind of a, a simple editing tutorial and uh, and then just yeah. took it on from there. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'd helped him uh, with some early JonTron episodes and he edited all of those. Um, so I learned a lot just from watching him edit his stuff and that made it very easy for me to emulate his style early on. Um, and like once I got my hands on Premiere, which is what I edited and what he edited, in, uh, it was just very natural because I spent so much time watching this process. So... It and now very... what I edit in as well, having watched your video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like since then, I just started experimenting and learning lots of random stuff and picking up things from kinds of websites all across the internet. Um, and kind of developed my own style over time, I guess. Yeah, it's oh. very whimsical. Uh, <clears throat> easy to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. It works really well with the uh, commentary, I believe. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> And oh no, just uh, just stroking the shaft just a little bit there. <laughs> Get of you course. over to my camp. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so what was the? I guess just kind of talking about the whole before Game Grum stuff. What was the last job you held before doing this? Um, so the job that I had, that so I was working. I so that summer between when I graduated from NYU, was the school I went to in New York. Um, in the summer between when I graduated and when I moved back to LA, I did a lot of random stuff. Um, I did some volunteer work. I volunteered for the Games for Change Festival. Um, but the job that I had, which I then continued when I was back in LA, like, kind of through, like, web chat and stuff, I was working for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was working for AOL's games.com. Uh, Holy they were crap. In, yeah, they, they were doing, like, this uh, restructuring and, like, changing a bunch of stuff and, like, redesigning their site. So I was sort of helping out with that transition. Um, and then continuing so that, that from that didn't LA, go well. <laughs> sorry? I guess, since that didn't go well. Yeah, I mean, they're all great people and it went really well. But I moved back to L.A. and I was trying to keep working on that. But I was waking up, like, really early in L.A. time to be on their schedule. And it was really tough to just do it over text chat. And then I started working on Game Grumps and was like, okay, I'm done with this. So it kind of worked out really well, timing-wise. But 
that was a really fun job. It just wasn't like it was a temporary job. So I knew that alone wasn't going to let me stay in New York. So, yeah. That's uh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of really interesting. So you've always kind of been in the internet kind of game de- or scene. I mean, not really development, but not really creation. And I guess how how would I phrase this? Coding or design? Yeah, but you've always been kind of like in, in the industry. Yeah, definitely an industry would be a good way of putting that. I mean, perhaps it's not really how I viewed it. I mean, I. I mean that. It's not about you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, just just in that, like, yeah, like technically it was part of the industry, but I had a couple jobs that summer that were related to games because I was desperately trying to work in something related to games. It didn't really matter what. It was like I just want to do stuff with games. I'm really passionate about this. Um, it was it was kind of your version of every kid that wants to work at GameStop because that's the first stop. I I applied to a couple of GameStops in New York. But oh yeah, I did too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody yeah, that so. plays a game is like, oh man, it'd be so great to work there because you get to you have games for free. Oh, it would be so amazing. You and $8 an hour. Yeah, yeah dude. I, do, I know someone. When I played, game. it was like five fifty an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. could buy so many games every year with that. <laughs> so many singular games. You do it for six months, you're like, this sucks. I quit. Like, what I is this retail this. in my I game hate, store? I hate this. <laughs> then you, yeah, then if you, only you, the you, customers you realize, didn't exist, this would be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just sorting games all day. That sounds great. Like, like okay, yeah. our game like, oh fuck, you guys, you're regulars. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> bad. Yeah, it's bad when the GameStop guys recognize you still when you don't buy any games from them. Yeah, mm. and you're their favorite customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, just because we come to a couple midnight launches and not buy games in either. <laughs> but uh, so, working in kind of a create, I mean. You would classify what you do as a creative environment, would you not? Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh yeah. So, what is probably the most challenging part about this environment? The the job or the environment? Because I would classify those as different. Well, let's start with one and work the other. What, what's the most challenging right. part uh, of the job itself? Um, probably just the time involved in editing. It's surprisingly time intensive, and just having that much focus on something for such a long time and having such you have to like simultaneously have a really good grasp on the big picture and also be able to micromanage these tiny details in order to make something really feel right uh, as an edited video um, like for example we uh, we started a second channel not too long ago grump out and we put up a video on that of every character from smash brothers clapping and that was the best. it's like yeah. a the, the extended cut is like five minutes long, and all told, that was over a full work week of work to get that <laughs> stupid video out the door. Well, then, it, um, then it went kind of viral, so like, it was oh, yeah. successful. Oh, yeah. yeah. If it makes you feel any better, we watched them back to back, the original <laughs> then the extended. Yeah, and uh, the funny thing is, uh, for oh, just for the viewership's sake, that uh, we had already, I, I had already worked with you at MAGFest. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a couple weeks later, a month later, uh, I see that just on the various tech blogs that I, I, I'm current on. And I'm thinking, oh, that's really funny. And then I w- learn a week after that that you guys did that. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got, like, messages from friends on Facebook. and like, dude, I saw your Smash video and, and stuff like that. Like, that was really cool. Because, you know, with, with Game Grumps, the channel, we're, we're just churning out so much content. And if you're not invested in that and, and sort of on top of the content, it, it doesn't really jump out at you as, as someone who's not familiar with it. Whereas a video that just exists 100% by itself has a better opportunity to kind of grab people in a different way. Whereas, you know, like one of my friends who doesn't watch Game Grumps isn't going to be like, dude, I just saw uh, like Mario Kart part whatever. And oh my God, like that doesn't happen very frequently. Uh, <laughs> so it, it is like very interesting having done that for so long to all of a sudden have this experience of like, oh yeah, we just dropped this little video, and a lot of people saw it and connected with it. So it was, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I, I think my personal favorite definitely being uh, Mega Man, and just oh, the God. setup to Mega Man because <laughs> it's just like I think it was Pikachu or Jigglypuff, and just you know a really simple one, and then Mega Man clang 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 clang. Yeah. Was that two soda cans? <laughs> yeah, I think it was two cans of Monster. 
I, I, I was correctly. like, these are two soda cans. This is yep. hilarious. Oh yeah, it's a really yeah, uh, thick sound. It's a lot deeper than you thought it would have been. Oh yeah, well, no, that that was games. really He's a robot. fun. Like, uh, when we so that video happened because Aaron and I were playing Smash Brothers after it came out, and we're like, these clapping animations are the dumbest thing we've ever seen. And like, their fingers <laughs> are clipping through their hands. It's like really bad. Uh, surprising for Nintendo. Uh, so we we're like, oh, but what if we did a video? Like, duh, what if we gave them realistic sound effects and it'd be stupid? And so we just started <laughs> to capture, like we do for Game Grumps, where we have like the, the footage being captured and the audio, and just started clapping and just like, you know, like doing different kinds of like putting like, our hands between sweatshirts to muffle it and like just finding <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Finding stuff around the office, because after, we, it was overall like an hour and a half long capture of just like individual claps and, and weird sounds. <laughs> it, was, it was a mind-blowing amount of time. Uh, and, and so we would get to like, you know, like, like, by the end, we were just losing it. So I think that's why the villager is like two milk jugs being like slammed together. <laughs> it's like this really like, doop, 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 like really oh, stupid sound. Oh, I oven mitts, like rubber oven mitts. Oh no no no! It was it was like straight up like cartons of milk that we were smoking together. Because <laughs> they're like, what can we find that's gonna make a funny sound that like and like Captain Falcon is two wooden blocks smacking into each other because he had like a really rigid clap. So a lot of them were very simple, and then we just got dumber and dumber. Um, but yeah, definitely the ones like Samus was really fun. That was that's like several metallic clanging sounds on top of each other and Mega Man. I'm particularly fond of Rob. Rob might be my favorite. Oh, yeah, the rapid fire. Yeah. Just yeah. Which I think that one was two Xbox controllers smacking into each other for, like, that plastic clacking sound. And then I found <laughs> a, like, motor servo sound from uh, freesound.org, which is a great site for free sounds. So, there you yeah. go. I'll put that one in my own wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> the feather in my hat to try and edit stuff together later. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, do they but, have uh, we can wh why did I start talking about this? <laughs> oh, so yeah, it's it's just that like it's like such a fun idea, and it was like a couple hours of me and Aaron goofing off, and then five straight days of editing of syncing up these claps and like finding the best <laughs> sounds, and it just took so long to do it. So that's probably the most challenging part is just the raw hours that go into making something like that. I just, I, I just imagine you guys in like lab coats and glasses with clipboards, looking at uh, <laughs> large computer frames with real-to-real -real tape. Right. Like, we've got to figure this out. And we're pointing at things with pencils. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we keep doing this on film? <laughs> we definitely should have costumes on hand to like get in character. We're doing something like that. Like no one will see it. It's just like we know. Like this is official. <laughs> <laughs> we put on every the lab once in a while. You just get a a, a, a character shot, and I mean. <laughs> Can you not borrow some uh, costumes from the Polaris set? Uh, I don't know. I guess we could break it and steal some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got a crowbar somewhere. There's a costume shop not too far from here that we've only used once. It was for the, the Mike Karuba shirt commercial that's like black and white noir, and we're all dressed up and stuff. Like, we went to a costume shop and rented stuff, and it was like, that was awesome, and we haven't done that again since. Um, I guess randomly we'll, like, buy stuff. Um, we have something coming out soon. I don't know when this is going to go up, but before long, there's going to be a video that goes up where Aaron's wearing a lab coat, and that's, like, just something we had, I guess. So, I well, everybody's got a lab coat. I've got a lab coat. Yeah. It's, it's If handy. you have a lab coat and a, uh, and a uh, what is it, <laughs> a clipboard, you can just mm -hmm. make anything sound official. Yep. People and immediately need, believe you. Then all you need is, like, a stethoscope and you're a doctor. Like, it's it's so easy. Yeah. It's it's universal. You can walk into any business and tell everybody that they need to clear out now. <laughs> and, and they'll just do you, it. You, you have experience with this, I'm assuming. Uh, Statue of limitations might not be up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's my car. Oh, there's your car. <laughs> Still under the stupid Titan. Uh, okay, so what was the, uh, or I guess what was is the most challenging part of the environment that you work in? Um, Probably just being in... Uh, an environment where you're surrounded by energetic, passionate, creative people can actually be daunting at times. Um, that, I got a smile all the time! Fuck! Yeah, I mean, it's it's like kind of a douchey answer, I guess. But like, it's just, <laughs> you know, when, when you're no, like not at all. head down trying to focus on something you're working on and behind you is a 
uh, or people filming something where they're smacking each other with chairs or something. And it's like, well, I kind of <laughs> like want to be a part of that, and it's distracting, but it's kind of great. And I also got to work on this video of these people clapping for the next twenty hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I've. I've seen a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that like Rooster Teeth puts out. Yeah. And it it just seems like that's always the case. Like there's always somebody that's free that just kind of wanders into the scene and the camera pans over and they get hit with something and it's pretty funny. <laughs> I've heard that their rule is you can do whatever you want as stupid as you want as long as someone is filming it. That's and a good that's rule. a pretty that's good, good rule. rule. Yeah. Yeah. Like if uh, if somebody dies or gets hurt, I mean, at least we'll be able to submit that to the insurance claim. <laughs> exactly. Hooker over who brought the camera? <laughs> you know who. Business yeah. expense. Pearl mounted on their head. Well, if it's good enough for Congress. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to ask a different question. Okay, so uh, what is the most creative, laugh out loud, fun day that you've had uh, working in uh, what you do? Um, Probably every time we film a sketch. Um,. Because, like, whenever we record episodes, it's still fun, but it's just all spur of the moment, like, bop, bop, bop. And when we're filming a sketch, I mean, they're very loosely scripted. Um, sometimes very loosely scripted, which makes it a nightmare to edit when continuity is just completely fucked. Um, <laughs> but whenever we're filming a sketch, there's kind of this sense that this is going to be turned into something. So it kind of makes things a little giddier. And when things spontaneously happen that are great, it's, like, a very exciting moment, and it just gets everyone really energized. Like, um, for, for example, we did a sketch uh, to introduce Kevin, our new editor, uh, late last year. And there's a part in it when Kevin's like, oh, this writer's going to take all night, and I just leave. And he's like, I want to go home. And he's like, see ya. And that was all improv. Like, originally, there was a really lame joke there and i wrote that sketch so i'm calling myself lame here uh <laughs> there's a lame joke where he like tries to talk and i like smash my finger into his mouth like no 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 you don't talk yet uh because <laughs> for a long time i was silent on the channel and so it was like kind of a nod to that and we like made this little scene and it was really great and like endeared a lot of people to kevin immediately um so it's like those kinds of moments are just I mean, there's so many times, I mean, that, that's why we started doing all these outtake videos, to kind of give you a sense of, all this shot is, is uh, Dan rubbing a shirt on Aaron's chest, and it took like half an hour to get that take without them cracking up. <laughs> it's just, every time, just breaking and bursting out laughing, and it just is so infectious and infuriating, and it's just so much fun. So, yeah. I was uh, particularly fond of uh, Kevin's spot in, oh, that's, that's gonna... Oh, crash! Just crash into something, but <laughs> watching watching Phil just crash into the military base in Grand Theft Auto. Uh, That's but the uh, the St. Yeah. Patrick's Day videos at the end of that when uh, Kevin was just destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, poor he guy. All in the toilet though. He didn't make a mess. He That's did. impressive. He, did, he didn't make a mess. And and I mean, uh, I think I got a message from my brother who was just like, "Oh man, poor Kevin. That's got to be so embarrassing." It's like, well, he edited those videos. Yeah. So it was his <laughs> goddamn <laughs> choice to put that in. So, and I'm glad he did, cause, cause, oh my god, that cracked me up. It was a great cap. It was like everything turned out well, somewhat. Yeah, and aces yeah. to him, because I know that when I get that far gone, uh, when I'm sitting on a bit of the creature, a bit uh, of the creature, a bit of the creature, uh, when I get to the point where I'm just heaving into a bowl, I'm pretty much done. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope he got home safely that night. Uh, okay. I would not have. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, we, we, we had, uh, I think Holly was our, our DD, and it's like, I don't know, because we, we shot that, you know, not on St. Patrick's Day, it was like a week and a half before then, so it's just a random day in March, and it's like, Holly, we need you to drive us home. And, and You didn't set that up with her beforehand? Oh, uh, I probably, I hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't I blame know. Ross if, if there was not proper warning. Uh, so, I guess changing gears a little bit, and uh, something that, I, I guess, um... I got inspired by with this question, uh, seeing Ross's video from uh, I guess a couple months ago or last year, but with the uh, the kind of landscape, and this is going to be a little more serious, uh, but uh, the landscape of YouTube and content generation changing, and the mm -hmm. way they do things. You're talking about his uh, his animation video. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, just how do you see kind of the field of uh, what you and the Grumps do uh, just changing over time? The future of YouTube. Yeah, the future of YouTube or, or just the future of what you guys do. Um, so I am not going to make any claims to know the, even the current state of YouTube, let alone the future. It is such a complicated ecosystem and there's so many moving parts and I don't know it, it's it's definitely a very exciting time like I kind of just get the feeling that we're, we're we're like kind of in a transition but it feels like we're sort of solidifying over these next couple of years like what this kind of content on YouTube really is because uh, it's only been very recently that we've seen all of these successful channels actually turn into businesses you know in early YouTube you just kind of have a viral video and no one would make any money off of it, and that's it. It's just like, oh, we made a video of Charlie bit my finger, and that's great. And now it's like, okay, uh, these these YouTube sensations are becoming actual brands, like Grumpy Cat as you know, milk in Seven Elevens and stuff like that. Like all these these crazy things that are happening. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't feel too bad, you know, for uh, getting a five thousand dollar appearance fee, which is. I think that's what's starting for, like, Charlie Bit My Finger, and what is it? Uh... Right. Yeah, they, they were appearing on, like, TV and stuff. Uh, that's true. But now it's sustainable to just be on YouTube. You don't need yeah, yeah. to do those outside things necessarily. Um, but in regards to what we're doing in our future, I think what we're... So, like, with Game Grumps, in a way, we're kind of a super group where we have Aaron and Ross, who are animators, and Dan's a musician, and Susie does... A million things with with fashion and bugs and taxidermy and all these things and not all of that really finds its way into game grumps but i think in the future we would love to do more of those things and we've seen that with starbomb where we've been dedicating time and and effort into making this band and these uh music videos and stuff like that and they performed some songs live at comic-con last year and i think we want to do more of that in the future we do more stuff that's not you know, it's probably a lot of it's still going to be related to games just because we're passionate about games. But doing more side projects and creative endeavors and things like that. Um, just kind of diversifying our portfolio, if you will. Doing different types of content. And besides that, I mean, Grump Out is a big step in that direction in that it's a place for us to upload videos that aren't Let's Plays and game commentary and stuff like that. Just random stuff that we feel like making that we're creatively inspired to do. And, and, and then and table flip as well. Like that's a, a purely live content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we hope to do more table flip. I know a lot of people have asked us about the state of that, and we're working hard to, to make more episodes happen. Uh, it's just yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's just I understand a lot more that that's uh, kind of twisted the, yeah, one, the way that gets done. Yeah, it's just it's there's so many more people involved in moving parts. Whereas, you know, with with Game Grumps and Steam Train and Grumpcade. We just walk into our recording room and do it, and it's done. And it's it's entirely us, and it's so easy. Whereas Table Flip, there's a crew, and there's a set, and there's catering, and there's all this money moving around, and it's just a much bigger production by its very nature. So it's just a lot more complicated, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. So definitely we're, we're, we're experimenting with those kinds of things. Another one was uh, is uh, Guild Grumps, which we teased at MAGFest. Uh, which is a show that was uh, Ross's uh, idea that is sort of documenting all of us playing World of Warcraft after the most recent expansion came out. And it's... I'm still waiting for my guild invite, by the way. <laughs> I, I Talk to Ross. That's not, that's not me. <laughs> as, as you'll see when Guild Grumps airs, I, I don't know anything about WoW. Um, and <laughs> oh, yes, so... the Night Elves and the Orcs, they get along famously. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the Pandaren, or whatever. Uh, can, can I so, be a dwarf hunter? For, for the Horde? Is for the, the Horde the, the right one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, you're, you're talking like a pro WoW player already. Yeah, totally. Leroy Jenkins. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so like, that, Boom, that show, nailed. that show has, I mean, I've seen early cuts of the episodes and stuff, and hopefully that's gonna be going on very soon, We're working hard on that as well. Um, but that show has gameplay footage and I mean, it shows us playing the game playing wow but it's almost it kind of resembles the office in a way where there is this on the fly stuff with cameras and there are these these one-on-one interviews with the director where we're talking about our experiences and stuff kind of like a reality show but we're also oh my god you, know, you break away into testimonials 
Yeah, yeah, we break away into testimonials. Oh and, and my reaction god! Shots and stuff. Did you not and see like, the Magfest teaser? I was behind. I was behind uh, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's. It's an unlisted upload on our channel. I'm sure you can oh, Google is it. it. Oh. It's not like on. It's unlisted, so you need the link. Um, oh no! Remember, uh, we got there late because. No, I know. We but, we but forgot someone, what time it someone was. Someone posted it on the subreddit, and I was. I think like, Ross did actually. Because I didn't actually. see it either. We. I was also behind the scenes. Yeah. But you're yeah. more lame than me. I'm. I did it. <laughs> I can find it. Yeah, get get caught up, bro. No, um, it. Or or I'll, I'll just uh, hold my breath for the release of the episode. Oh yeah, you could have it be a surprise. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully very soon. Um, but yeah, it's it's it is reality TV style, but this was a hundred percent our own creation. Like there was no there were no outside parties involved. We're kind of hoping that Blizzard likes it because I don't know. Apparently they're kind of iffy about. I mean, we're we're very fair against WoW. I I don't want to get too into it, but. I think uh, they've been uh, definitely like Aaron and I, accepting. Yeah, Aaron and I start out just being like, "This game sucks," and and it kind of <laughs> evolves over time. But we're also very, very aware that it's a filmed show and there's a camera crew following us. So there's a lot of kind of fourth wall breaking that I enjoy, where it's like, "Oh, this is scripted," but we're pretending it's not. I mean, the show <laughs> isn't scripted, but I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything. It's just it's a really fun thing and it's a very new project for us it's a very different type of show and hopefully it does well and we can do more stuff like that so what you're saying is you're going to be solely responsible for forcing people to get back into wow oh <laughs> Thanks, yeah Barry. you're and, welcome and then paying for the character transfers <laughs> and uh and race changes yeah blizzard's gonna like you guys just fine <laughs> yeah we'll see hopefully